one interpretation of quantum physics, you are riding through reality on a quantum trajectory. And when you snap your fingers, your trajectory fragments into a cascade of alternate universes, one for each possible quantum outcome among all the different quantum states composing the molecules of your fingers. This is the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics first proposed and explored by Hugh Everett in his doctoral thesis in 1957. Everett was working on his thesis under the supervision of John Wheeler at Princeton University. When it was time to file the thesis, Wheeler was so worried about how Everett's ideas would be received that he flew to Copenhagen to meet with his own former advisor, Niels Bohr. He even arranged for Everett to visit Copenhagen. But the reception of the many worlds theory by Bohr's colleagues in Copenhagen was so hostile that when Everett returned to the US, he took a job at the Pentagon and left physics behind. Fast forward 20 years after Wheeler had left Princeton for the University of Texas at Austin, and once again a young physicist was struggling to reconcile quantum physics with gravity. The many worlds interpretation of quantum physics seemed the only sane way out of the dilemma, and once again a side trip became a lifelong obsession. David Deutsch, visiting Wheeler in the early 1980s, became convinced that the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics held the key to paradoxes in the theory of quantum information. It took only a couple of years for Deutsch to find what he was looking for, a simple quantum algorithm that yielded twice as much information as was possible if there were no parallel universes. This is now the famous Deutsch algorithm, the first quantum algorithm of quantum computing. If quantum interference is the heart of quantum computing, then there is one physical system that has the ultimate simplicity that may yet inspire future generations of physicists to invent future impossible things, the quantum beam splitter. Nothing in the study of quantum interference can be simpler than a sliver of dielectric material sending single photons one way or another. Yet the outcome of this simple system challenges the mind and reminds us of why Everett and Deutsch embraced the many worlds interpretation in the first place. The so-called beam splitter is actually a misnomer. Its name implies that it takes a light beam and splits it into two, as if there were only one input. But every beam splitter has two inputs, which is clear by looking at the classical 50-50 beam splitter. The actual action of the optical element is the combination of beams into superpositions in each of the outputs. It is only when one of the input fields is zero, a special case, that the optical element acts as a beam splitter. In general, it's a beam combiner. Given two input fields, the output fields are superpositions of the inputs. For instance, if we have input fields E0 and E1, then there will be two output fields, E2 and E3, which will be linear superpositions of the inputs. This relation is expressed more succinctly as a matrix input-output relation. A quantum beam splitter is just a classical beam splitter operating at the level of individual photons. Rather than describing single photons entering or leaving the beam splitter, it is more practical to describe the properties of the fields through single photon quantum operators. The photon creation operators operate on single photon modes. For instance, for the beam splitter, the A0 and A1 operators create photons in each of the inputs by operating on the quantum vacuum state called 0, 0. This creates the 0, 1 and 1, 0 states each describing a single photon in each input. The input-output relations for the quantum beam splitter are expressed as linear superpositions of the quantum operators. In this case, A0 is a linear superposition of the output quantum operators A2 and A3. The beam splitter operating on a single photon input converts the input mode creation operator into a superposition of output mode creation operators that generates the following equation. The beam splitter is operating on a single photon input, and if you express the A0 in terms of the A2 and A3, then what you get is a linear superposition of two single photon output states, 1, 0, and 0, 1. The resulting output is entangled either the single photon exits one port or it exits the other. In the many worlds interpretation, the photon exits from one port in one universe and it exits from the other port in another universe. 
On the other hand, in the Copenhagen interpretation, the two output ports of the beam splitter are simply anti-correlated. Let's see if we can turn this mathematical description of the quantum beam splitter into something visual. First, consider a stream of photons hitting a mirror. The photons all reflect and are all detected by a single photon detector that outputs an electrical pulse. Such a regular stream of photons is not the usual situation. Most light sources emit photons randomly. Now let's look at a semi-classical picture of a 50-50 beam splitter. Each photon can be considered to have a 50% probability of reflecting or transmitting. However, we have to remember that the quantum beam splitter produces a linear superposition at the output. Therefore, each photon hitting the beam splitter is split into a linear superposition of each photon both reflecting and transmitting. It is only when a photon is detected in the detector that the actual path the photon takes, either reflected or transmitted, is determined. In the Copenhagen interpretation, the process of photon detection is called wave function collapse. However, in the many worlds interpretation, the photon is transmitted in one universe and is reflected in another universe. When more than one photon is incident on a beam splitter, the fascinating effects of quantum interference come into play, creating unexpected outputs for very simple inputs. This leads to the HOM effect, named after Hong Uen Mandel, who first performed these experiments at the Optics Institute at the University of Rochester. For instance, the simplest example is a two-photon input where a single photon is present in each input port of the beam splitter. Through the properties of quantum interference, both photons exit the same set of the beam splitter together, with one reflecting and the other transmitting, or vice versa. No single photon outputs are observed because of destructive quantum interference for those cases. This highlights one of the interesting ways that quantum beam splitters differ from classical beam splitters.